Hello, my name is Jacqueline Dahl, and this is going to be the final part in this series about uh, diet and fasting. It was uh, created because a subscriber asked and was curious about my experience with dieting and fasting, uh, be it vegetarian, uh, vegan, uh, eating meat, or uh, fasting. So not right now, today, what topic we're going to talk about is my experience with food and dieting and fasting during my uh, 20s and till now. So what I want to do is talk to you about the resources that were provided for me. Uh, when I finally decided that I wanted to be more uh, proactive with my health, because at the time in my 20s I was very active as far as physically, but I wanted to get more uh, into nutrition, what I'm putting into my body, instead of how I can make my body fit on the outside. So what I started doing was exploring different ways of eating. Um, <clears throat> what I did was when I, listen, let's should I go back uh, to like the age of 20, let's go back to 22. This is right before I entered into the military. Um, I decided I wanted to be a vegetarian. Um, and that was for reasons of like health, you know, because I felt like I could be a lot healthier if I wasn't eating meat and felt like meat wasn't processing in my system. And then, uh, so yeah, when I went into the military, I kind of followed along with that, eating vegetarian, just not eating anything that's meat. Um, I don't think I even ate anything that had dairy in it either when I was in basic training. When I came back home, I still felt like I wanted to do that, but then I got a job at a fast food place <clears throat> called Bud's Burgers, <laughs> and um, I was serving burgers all day. I was eating burgers every now and then, but then I got tired of doing that because my body was feeling worn down even though I was running like five days a week. So what I did was I stopped eating meat completely then, and uh, they had an alternative at Bud's, Bud's Burgers to have like a veggie burger. So I would fix that. Nobody ate those and nobody ordered them when they came to the restaurant. So I would eat that. And then I started uh, picking up little magazines at grocery stores. Like there's one that was called Vegetarian Times, I believe. And I'd read that and um, kind of apply it to what I was doing at the time. So I got, kept getting healthier and healthier. Then when it came uh, to my, uh, when I was pregnant, I was really trying to be conscientious about what I ate. But um, what I ended up doing is, at the time, the person who I am still married to now <laughs> eats meat as well. He eats meat, um, he eats a little bit of everything, he's an omnivore. So um, when we got together, I, I was, had decided that I wanted to be vegan. So I'll show you some books that I came to around this time. This one's a really popular one, people probably know this, is John Roberts' Diet for a New America. Um, this basically talks about what happens to the animals that you buy in your regular conventional grocery stores, the, the torture that they have to endure, um, the resources that are put out in order to feed these animals and care for them is outrageous. Anyway, um, it's just a very interesting perspective and it really opened my mind to why am I eating this animal, you know, what's the purpose of that? Um, is it just to like nourish my body or is it just because everybody is eating hamburgers so I should eat a hamburger too, you know, kind of thing. So yeah, this is a very good book um, by John Robbins. He's really, really a great guy. Um, I've got another mo book by him too as well. But he's uh, pretty much promoting a vegan lifestyle. And um, But him, he himself, I saw an interview with him and he talks about how he does eat fish. <laughs> but. Um, he says the optimal diet is a vegan vegan diet. So, and then the other book I came across was the New Farm Vegetarian Cookbook, and this basically is like what you would call a hippie cookbook, like from the like 70s. It was a um, organization called the Farm, and they were uh, these uh, hippies who believed in uh, eating clean. You know, they would make here you go. They would make substitutes for everyday, like, standard American diet foods, only replacing it with, like, stuff like soy-based products to make seitan bacon and things of that nature, you know, just replacing meat with uh, vegetable protein substitutes. 
So it's a really good book. And I came across this and I actually have been using it as you can tell. <laughs> so yeah, during that time in my 20s, that's what I was doing. I was converting over into being a vegetarian and vegan, more vegan than vegetarian. So then I, um, I see, let's see, it's hard to go back. So in my 30s, I discovered, um, I guess wouldn't you say 30s, almost 30s, probably about like 27, 28. Late, late 20s, I discovered raw foods, and I was very excited about it. Um, here's a book that I have that's really good, that I've got more than one book, by Ann Wigmore called Recipes for a Longer Life. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this uh, part of the video and continue it, because I think that my, uh, my camera is probably going to die out, because it can only do 10 minute increments, and I don't want to go too long. So next part of the show, I'm going to talk about some of the other books that have inspired me to get more healthy and learn more about how my body works. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see you soon. Peace.